let me introduce my drawing friends to you. What I have here is a mini drafter. This is a this is a stencil of circles that I use to draw smaller circles. It is easier for me to draw them. This is a 90, 30, 60 set square. This is a 90, 45, 45 degree set square. Let me ask these friends to go away from here for a while. I use two different kinds of graphite grades to draw my drawings. This one over here uses the H grade. I use this to draw the final lines in my drawing and this one uses the 2 H graphite grade. This helps me draw construction lines or lighter lines in my drawing. To have some fun, I also have a colored pencil. I will try to figure if I would be using this after all. I use three different kinds of pencils for my drawing. This one uses the H grade of graphite. It helps me draw final drawings. This is of grade 2 H. It helps me draw construction lines and along with me, I also have a colored pencil. I will try to figure if I will be using this today. And then I have this friend of mine, a compass. It helps me draw circles, which are bigger than the diameter of the circles I have on the stencil. I make a lot of mistakes in drawings and in general. So, I have with me not one, but two erasers, but ideally I should not be using them in my drawing. I should try to avoid using them. There is a piece of cloth I keep handy just in case I am using my friend that is going to correct me to clean up my sheet every time I use this friend. Okay, coming back to my main friend of drawing. This is something really interesting. Mini drafter of course. This is having two sets of parallelogram linkages, two parallel links over here. At this end, one parallelogram linkage is fixed. Here I have a coupler that is coupling two linkages and the end point of this parallelogram linkage has two scales, one horizontal, the other one vertical. Most often in my drawings, I have to draw horizontal lines and vertical lines. And the beauty of this linkage, this mechanical linkage is this, that wherever I move this end point of my mini drafter, the vertical scale always remains vertical and the horizontal scale always remains horizontal. I have set my friend in such a way that the horizontal scale aligns very nicely with the horizontal margin of my sheet and the vertical scale aligns with the vertical margin of the sheet. Okay, so, the goal today is to draw the third angle orthographic projection of the solid. I have not yet introduced to you a very important friend of mine. The sketch sheet. Before I transfer 
my drawings to the file sheet. It is always a nice idea to prepare myself with the sketches, in this case for the solid. So, that if I am very well prepared, I will not be using this friend of mine. It is going to help me with two things. It is going to help me with two things. One, I will be saving time and two, I will prevent my sheet from getting spoiled. Camera 2. So, before I start, let me prepare myself well with the sketch of the solid. What I have here is a pictorial view of the solid. Okay, so, I have the pictorial view of the object with me here. Let me call this the x axis. Let me call the axis parallel to this line as the y axis and the vertical axis as the z axis. So, many of these features in the object, they are parallel to the principal planes. This is the x z principal plane, x y principal plane and y z principal plane. This arrow indicates that we are viewing the object along this direction. So, this plane here serves as the front view of the object. The top view is given by the x y plane and the profile view is given by the y z plane. Let me now start sketching the object. Remember that I am drawing this in the third angle orthographic projection. So, if I view the object along this direction, what will I be seeing? I will be seeing the bottom edge. So, if I look at this object in the frontal plane, which features of the object will I be seeing? So, I will be seeing this line all the way through from here to here and then from here to here. Now, this entire dimension from this point up till this point is 90 millimeters. So, all the numbers over here are in millimeters. So, this is 90. So, let me start from the left part of the object. So, I will have a vertical line which is of length 20. I will go horizontal from this point to this point and this is about 25 and then I will go vertical from here to here. So, this height of this edge from the bottom is about 30 and then I will have a horizontal line here. So, this is 30 and this is 25. I am mixing my dimensions here, but not to worry at this point point. and then from this point to this point there is a vertical line and then a horizontal line and then a vertical line going down. Okay. 
Now, in the front view, this point and this point, they essentially will be the same. I will be seeing a horizontal line from here. And then, a vertical line. That vertical line is the projection of this slant line in the front view. And then, a vertical line corresponding to the projection of this arc and then all the way down. And then, I will see a horizontal line. This height is 7. Notice that I have not marked this feature. Why? Because this feature happens to appear on a slant surface and I am not really sure about the height of this feature as yet. I will probably have to take this height from the projections emanating from other views. Likewise, for the position of the center line of this arc. Well, maybe not. I know that this line is 22 millimeters below this line. So, maybe I can mark 22 millimeters from the horizontal line at the top and perhaps mark the axis of the sock. And of course, I will have a horizontal line corresponding to this and a horizontal line corresponding to this. Let me go back and focus on the left part of the object. Look at this line. This line belongs to the slant surface of the object, but in the frontal plane, its projection will be a vertical line going all the way from here up till here. So, this is this vertical line and then I will go from here to here and essentially this line is also going to be visible in the front plane. Rather this entire line will be a horizontal line in the front plane. Now, look at this edge and this edge. Now, corresponding to this edge, there will be a point here in the front view and this edge will go down a little bit. I am not really sure to what height, but I will go down. I will get this height from the projections coming from the other views. Well, how about this line? This line again will be a vertical line in the front plane and in fact, it is going to be coinciding with this line. So, I will probably have to go all the way down. Now, let us look at the top view of the object. How would the object look if I am looking at it from the top? In the third angle projection, the top view is above the front view. So, in the top view, I will essentially be seeing this horizontal line at the base and then from the left a vertical line. Now, there is a discontinuity in surface. So, this line 
essentially signifies the meeting of a horizontal surface and a slant surface. So, there will be a line here once again there is a little discontinuity here and this is affiliated with the projection coming out from the front view. I will be drawing this line, it is going to come down. So, this length is 35, so I will may be mark this length here. This is about 7, this horizontal line is going to go all the way up to this projection line. this length is 13, and then I am going to go up from here, and then horizontal, up to the point where these two edges make a right angle, which is here. then I will go all the way down to the baseline in the top view and then stop here. There would be a vertical line in the top view and then there would be a horizontal line. Once again, this would be projected as a planar surface in the top view. So, I would see this line, the projection of this arc would again be a line and this line. Did I miss anything out in the top view pertaining to the feature changes in this region of the object? perhaps I did. There would be a vertical line corresponding to this feature change in the object in the top view. Will I be able to locate the axis of this cylindrical feature in the top view? Possibly or maybe not. However, notice that this overall length is 90, which is marked here. The distance from this vertex to this vertex, rather the distance here is about 65. So, let me note it down here. This will help me prepare the bounding box for the object, for the top view of the object rather. Am I missing anything out? Well, perhaps. I should not have gone all the way from this point to this point. If I look at the object from the top, Again, I would be seeing this edge, I would be seeing this edge, but this edge would fall short maybe up to this point, and then I would be seeing this horizontal line here. So, in the top view, you would not be seeing lines corresponding to this region of the object. Just to remind myself, I let go of these lines. 
anything else that I may have missed when drawing the top view. Well, let us see later. Okay, I will make a sketch note for myself that I am missing a feature here and of course, one of the projections for this feature, for this feature is this vertical line. I will come back to this later, but for now let me continue by trying to draw the view of the object on the plane on the right hand side as if I am visualizing the object along this direction. I am going to be leaving out some space here. Of course, this height is the same as this height and this length is the same as this length. I take some projections out, let this intersect, draw a 45 degree line and then take a vertical projection from here. Take a horizontal projection here. So, my profile view will be within this box. On the left, I will be seeing this edge, I will be seeing this entire baseline. And then at some distance, which I get through projection from the top view, I will see a vertical line this horizontal line is something that I will be getting from the projection from the top view again. And then I will have a slant line, I just draw that line as dotted at this time. Let me extend the axis. Uh, it will be easier for me to draw the circular arc in the profile view. Let me sketch that. And then join the rest of these lines. So, this part of the object is taken care of. I would of course, see a full rectangle corresponding to this feature here and then of course, this edge relates to this point, this edge relates to this point in the profile view. And now, let us come back to this feature. Let me draw a horizontal projection from the top view take it down I still don't have this height but what I know is that this slant surface starts from a height of 30 so in the profile view I have this height So, this slant surface starts from here and it ends over here somewhere and of course, this slant surface will be behind this little block here. 
so will be hidden. So, I have this hidden line here that corresponds to this land surface over which this feature lies and I also have a projection emanating from the top view for this feature. So, this projection comes here hits the 45 degree line comes down and it intersects this hidden line. So, if I project this intersection point horizontally onto the front view, I would get this line in the front view and this block will be visible as a solid block. So, I have taken care of this mental note that I made for myself some time ago. One needs to be a little careful. In particular, when trying to figure if one has missed a few lines or added unnecessary lines. For example, in this case, I had added these lines before. I have made this correction for myself, but I may have missed a few lines. I will have to go over this object again and over these three orthographic projections. So, this slant surface seems all right, this part seems all right, this part here would be this part the block this land surface seems all right, this land surface seems ok, I would not be seeing this in the front view that is all right, I will be seeing this part of course, but wait a second, how about this line? In the top view, this is all right. In the front view, I have this feature. So, I am ok here, not to worry. Look at this slant surface, how I captured this in my profile view. Of course, I have captured this surface through this hidden line but probably not this. Okay. So, this would be a slant line in the profile view starts at a height of 20. I have this marked here and then it goes all the way up to this point, this point here and of course, it is hidden. So, I will draw dotted lines. Now, I need to be a little careful. I focus my attention on this circular feature or cylindrical feature. I have a line corresponding to this point, which is an edge in the front view. Would I be seeing an edge corresponding to the bottom part of this cylindrical arc? looks like I will be and again of course, it is not going to be visible therefore, it will be hidden. Likewise, if I take a projection of this part up onto the top view, Oh, I just realized that I have not drawn this part here. Okay, so, I will do that. So, I take the axis, take its projection on the top view and then 
I draw the center line, I take the projection of this point on the top view. This would be visible, so I will have a solid line. Likewise, this point it is projection up and on to the left it will again be visible, so I will have a solid line. And coming back to this region of the circular arc, if I take the projection up to the left, I will see a hidden line. Let me mark it using a blue colored pen. All right, so would I be missing anything? You know, thinking aloud could be so difficult, which is what I have been doing over the past half an hour, 45 minutes. I may have missed out on a hidden line here, hidden vertical line here. Let us revisit that. So, if I look at this feature, traverse along the horizontal projection come down here okay. and if I look at the corresponding vertical line for this feature, I would see that there would be a line of course, but this line which is here will be behind this part of the object and therefore, it would be a hidden line. Okay. So, this is 65, this is 90, this height is 50, so therefore, this is 50, I just want to make sure that I am when I am dimensioning my final drawing, I do not repeat these dimensions. So, let me encircle the main diamonds. Let me encircle, let me encircle the main dimensions 90, 65, 50, I have a 20 here, I have a 25, this height is 30, this is about 7, this is about 7, this distance is 35 this distance is 13, of course, this is 65. Did I miss out on any dimension? Yes, of course. This arc is of radius 6. This dimension here from here to here is 54. and I can keep going on and on. So, I will not worry about that, I will worry about these dimensions when I start drawing the main thing on the sheet. So, we will now draw the orthographic projection of the solid of which the sketches were drawn previously. So, I have my pictorial view of the solid here, I have my sketches here. I am kind of prepared and ready to transfer the orthographic views in the third angle projection of the solid. Throughout my intention will be to not use these friends of mine. I will be a little slow and I will try to be careful. For now, let me take this piece away and focus on the sketch. Once again, to draw the construction lines and projection lines, I am going to be using the light 2 edge graded pencil and to draw my solid lines, I will be using the dark edge graded pencil. I will start by drawing the bounding boxes 
of these views, the front view, the top view and the profile view. So, that I have an idea about how much space I will be requiring on this worksheet. So, this is about 90 millimeters and this is about 65 millimeters. Let me focus on the bounding boxes for these two views. So, I have my scale here goes from 0 to 25, this is about 155 millimeters. So, looks like I have plenty of space here. I will try to start from the base of the sheet. Let me first draw the hinge line using an H graded pencil. By convention, it is represented by a long dash followed by two short dash, short dashes. Okay. So, I have my hinge line here. I will leave some space on the left of the hinge line and on the right of the hinge line, so that my figure does not look flatter. I will leave a few centimeters to the left. All I need is 90 millimeters. which I have right here. Maybe I will leave some more space. This is a dim line intentionally made. It not be clear now or maybe it is. Anyways, this is 65 millimeters. I will leave some space here. I will have this projection line, and then perhaps from here. I will make a line of length 65. This height is 50 millimeters for both the boxes. here and then here. You know how interesting this drafter is, the horizontal lines they remain horizontal and the vertical lines they remain vertical. Let me now complete these boxes. Let me verify if these dimensions are ok, they look like they are. perhaps the same height from the base. Okay. Of course, let me join these two lines via a projection line. So far, so good. 
Now, let me look at the top view. This length is 90 and this height is 65. Let me take the projections upwards. Once again, let me leave some space between the front view and the top view and I will do that by drawing a hinge line again. a long dash followed by two short dashes. I will take vertical projections now, maybe up till this point. And then I will draw a line a horizontal line of 90 millimeters I'll extend this projection and I'll extend the vertical line from here this is about 65 90 again. And this is 65. Let me extend the vertical line from here. And the horizontal line from here. Then let me use my drafter for this. And if I join these two points, I would reckon that this would be 45 degrees. Precisely. has to happen because this dimension is the same as this dimension. So, we have the bounding boxes ready. So, this is for the front view, the top view, the profile view. So, while we are drawing it may be a good idea for us to also start dimensioning the object. So, for this example, I will be using the aligned dimensioning scheme. I got the length of the object, I got the height of the object, and perhaps in the profile view. I can get the width of the object. To make sure the lines are different, 
let me use arrowheads. Notice that this dimension line and this dimension line, I have tried for them to be on the same horizontal line for the figure to look better. With this preparation ready, let me slightly darken this line. So, with this preparation ready, I can now think about starting to draw the main solid lines. I look at my sketch and I am kind of almost sure which ones of these lines will be solid, where they are going to be and which ones of these lines will be hidden, where they are going to be. I will be careful of course, I will not be using these, although I keep them handy. I will not be using these, although I keep them handy, but still. Okay. The vertical edge on the front view, this will appear as total solid. So, I will darken this line. This entire horizontal line at the top and at the bottom will appear solid. So, I will darken these two lines. And in this line, for dark lines, realize that I am using the H grade pencil. And then I will be seeing this entire vertical line as solid. So, I will darken this as well. This is the benefit of preparing the sketches a priori. For the top view, I will have this horizontal line, this vertical line and a part of this horizontal line as solid lines. This part is something that I would not see. So, remember I had cut these portions of the lines. While I am drawing the solid lines, maybe I will draw these in the top view. The full vertical line, single stroke, no multiple strokes, the full horizontal line, and then vertical line in part. I will not worry about that and a little length of horizontal line over here, I will not worry about that either. Coming back to the front view, this height is at 20, so I will mark this height and then I will make a projection of this. maybe a line throughout. I might need this line in the profile view as well and let me also dimension this. use the arrowheads to differentiate this line from other solid or 
projection or construction lines. From here to here is 25. and this is a solid line. So, I will make this solid. From here to here is a line throughout up till this vertical line and then of course, this feature gets extended in the top view. Maybe what I could do is I could draw a solid line from here up till this horizontal line and then perhaps use a different pencil the 2 edge pencil to extend this to the top view. In the top view this distance is 7. So, maybe I will mark 7 here. and I will draw a light line. Maybe a little darker line. Now, this vertical line extends up to this horizontal line. So, I can use a solid pencil directly and then this line is also solid. So, I will mark this as solid. Now, coming back to the front view, this is this horizontal line is at a height 30 from the base. So, I will mark this dimension 30, use a different pencil and take this construction line all along rather all across to the profile view. Okay, now, let us focus on the object on the dimensions given in this picture. This entire thing is 90, 25, 13, 19, 13. So, this dimension would be 90 minus 25 plus 13 is 38, yeah. 38 plus 19 is 57, 57 plus 13 is 70, 20. Once again, 25 and 13, 38, 38 and 19, 57, 57 and 13, 70. So, this dimension here is about 20. So, I should have noted this down while I was making the sketch. This is 20. I can draw this vertical line. I know that this is a solid line throughout at a distance 20 from the right vertical line in the front view.
and I can switch my pencil, use a different grade pencil, use lighter line, take a projection in the top view and the top view this line is again solid up to this height. So, maybe I can draw a solid line and then I see this line. I still am not sure about this, but that is ok. Coming back to this picture, this dimension is 13. So, this is 13, we will come back to that later, but for now let us not forget to dimension this part here. Again switching pencils using a lighter pencil. Using the arrowheads. Coming back to this view, this is 13. Let me measure this. and draw a vertical light line. Let us also not forget to mark this dimension. Switching pencils, using a lighter pencil, using arrowheads. Let us try to focus on this distance. If I look at this figure, this line in the front view corresponds to this line and the length of this line is 19 plus 13, which is about 32. So, let me have this dimension over here 32. And mark this dimension this line is at a height of 30. This is about 32, which is okay. So, you are fine. So, this line is solid. I switch pencils. I draw a solid line. then this line is also solid. I draw a solid line here. Now, this feature is of dimension 25. So, I can mark this dimension here. I switch pencils use arrowheads okay so while i'm marking these dimensions i'll also cross them in this picture so i've got 90 i've got 50 i have got 65 I have got 20, maybe this dimension I have not marked, all right. So, I will do that. Now, this is marked and I got 13 here. So, this is done. I got 13 and 19 here. Let us worry about that a little later. I got 25. 
So, this is marked ok. Let me not use, let me not lose focus, come back to the main drawing. Okay, so, I have got this vertical line, this feature here, this block here, this block is something that I will be worrying a little later, these lines so far so good, I am kind of ok. All right, I am missing a few lines here, but I will worry about them later. Let us focus on the profile view, this vertical line is solid. So, I am going to draw this as a solid line, this horizontal line is solid again and this vertical line is solid, I am going to draw both as solid lines. I am not supposed to be drawing a line over another line, I am not supposed to be overlapping the lines, but anyhow I am permitting myself to do that. Still I have taken a vow that I am not going to be using an eraser, although I have made a mistake here, that is all right. So, this vertical line is solid, ok. And in fact, this line will also be a solid line. So, let me finish this line. Okay. I am switching pencils. This distance is about 54 from here to here. Let me mark this, I should have done that while I was sketching this. And this height is 7, which is alright, I mark this. So, from here, I measure 7. draw horizontal projection. all the way down to the front view. And then the front view, this is a solid line. So, maybe I will switch pencil, switch pencils and draw this as a solid line all right. And I will also dimension this I should be using a different pencil okay now this length is 54 I measure 54, make a little mark and draw a vertical line. This vertical line will be solid and from here this distance is also 7. So, I measure that distance. So, whenever I am drawing a line which is other than a horizontal line or vertical line, I am not using a drafter, I am rather preferring to use an edge in my set square. ok. 
okay. So, once I have this slant line in the profile view, let me try to locate the center of this circular feature or cylindrical feature. So, this is at a height of 22 millimeters from the top edge. So, what I will do is the best thing for me is to locate a line at a height or rather at a distance 22 from the top edge here somewhere and maybe draw an edge draw a projection line and let me extend this projection line up to this point it is a light line and where this horizontal line intersects with this slant line I will have the center. Let me mark the center using center lines a dash followed by a short dash followed by a long dash followed by a short one like so and then in a similar manner the horizontal center line and let me extend the center line up to the front view. All right. Once I have located the center, I am going to be using this friend here, a stencil. I know that this is of radius 6. So, I will have to locate a circle of diameter 12 right here. You know this really helps when drawing smaller circles. Adjust the center and then draw this arc. Once I have this arc, maybe I can make the rest of this inclined line solid. There we go. So, let me dimension this use a different pencil. Make sure the dimension lines are also lined. Use the arrow heads and wait for the numbers to come later. Okay. Looking at the sketch, I have this box ready, I have this feature ready, I have to worry about these two hidden lines. Okay. So, I already have this vertex here. I need to locate this vertex and this vertex. This is at a height of 20 and this one is at a height of 30. I think I already have these heights one here and the other one here. So, maybe I can go ahead and draw these hidden lines using an edge pencil. Hidden lines are to be shown by dashed lines. This one is at height of 20 and this one is at height of 30.
there we go. I'm trying to be careful, I'm trying to not let the lines overshoot the lines of the bounding box. Here, maybe it overshot by a little, but alright. So, looking at the profile view and comparing, I've got this feature, this entire box, two hidden lines. I'm yet to draw this line. All right, and this is something that I'll be getting from the top view. So let me draw this horizontal line, which is at a distance of thirty-five from this top line. So I measure thirty-five. Somewhere here. and this dimension is 13. So, maybe I will measure 13. Right here, this line is a solid line. So, that is a solid line for me. I will use a different pencil. and I will project this line onto this 45 degree line. I will take a vertical projection, come down and complete this line. this would be culminating on the top inclined hidden line, right there. Now, this part is done. Let us look at the front view. So, I got this feature ready. I still have to worry about this box. So, maybe I will do a question mark here on my sketch. This rectangular feature is done. So, you would realize that I have left a small blot here. Well, sorry about that. This part is done and then I have to capture these three lines. I have already captured this line and these three lines are going to come from this circular feature. So, I take the projections. I use a two edge pencil and then an edge pencil to draw this solid line. I go on top, use a two edge to get the projection. And then the edge to get the solid line. Okay. And there would be a hidden line corresponding to this lower part of the circular void. So, I will draw a hidden line here. Okay, so except for this part, my top view looks like it's done. I'm sorry, my front view looks like it is done. Now switching to the top view. Let me start from here. This line is solid. 
draw a solid line. Now, this part is a solid line and this part is a solid line. So, I will complete both. I still have not gotten this line, but that is ok for now. Let me focus on this part of the figure. So, this again corresponds to the circular void here, a circular feature. I take these projections, first I take the projection of the axis. The center, switch pencils, right lines go up go left from this 45 degree line, possibly stop here, switch pencils and draw a center line, dash dot dash dot dash dot that. Okay. I project these two points upward, I already have this, maybe I will project this thing also upward while I am at it and then project this thing to the left in the top view and then both these lines are solid lines. So, I will switch to an edge pencil and draw a solid line here and yeah. All right. I still have to worry about this hidden line and for that I will take the projection from this part of the profile view. Take this to the left and draw a hidden line now. Okay. I still have not made this line solid because I was not sure of this dimensions maybe I am, maybe I am. So, if I look at this feature, I have this feature already over here, maybe I can take the projections, rather projection. go up to the 45 degree line, take it onto the left and then make a solid line. Okay, looking at my sketch, now maybe I can cover this part. Okay, let me verify if I have missed out on anything. So, this part is fine, I have got center lines, I have got hidden lines, I have got this hidden line, this part seems ok and then I have got in my front view this part, this part ok, I may have missed on this, I still have to come back to this. Good idea that I question marked it, otherwise I have this part, I have this part, I have all the lines kind of pretty much laid down over here. Now, coming back to this part, I will have to use the projection 
from my top view. And I will have to use this projection from my profile view. So, maybe I will do that first, use this projection. And then, maybe I can get up to here and then switch pencils and then draw solid lines. All right, so this part is also taken care of. Maybe this line is not as thick as it should be. So, maybe I will thicken it a little more. I may have forgotten to draw this. Anyhow, I am not supposed to be drawing a line over another line, but for the first example, I am permitting myself to do so. I am permitting myself to do so. Okay. Looks like I have all the features here now in all the three views. So, maybe I can focus on the dimensions. I have many of these dimensions covered, but a few may have been left. Let me try to cover those. So, this one here for instance is not covered. So, maybe I can show this in the top view. So, I have to leave some gap here to write that dimension out. Okay, so, this dimension is covered, this dimension is covered all right, 13, this length maybe I can mention it over here. So, this is done, 19 maybe I can mention it over here. This is taken care of. Now, this height 22 which is used to locate this axis. Maybe I can dimension that in the profile view. I am just trying to make sure that I do not repeat these dimensions. So, this is taken care of 54. I can also think about dimensioning that in the profile view. I have to leave some space for the bottom dimension. So, this 54 is taken care of this height 7. Did I capture that? Maybe I capture that over here. Ideally, I should have made a dimension line in the profile view, but that is ok. So, this is taken care of and finally, I think it is this radius that I need to worry about. So, for that I need to draw a 45 degree leader. 
So, maybe I will use a combination of my mini drafter and set square. Let one of the edges pass through the center of the arc. Maybe draw a little line here and thereafter draw a horizontal line. Okay, so, this is taken care of. I will quickly jot down these dimensions. I will use a little bit of help from my sketch and from this figure. The work of the drafter seems to be done. So, this is 90. I am using the aligned dimensioning. This is 65, this is 54, I am trying to print the letters and also I am trying to keep them big. Let me have my sketch here and my dimension sheet here. So, this 90 is taken care of, let me circle that, 54 taken care of, let me circle that, 65 taken care of, let me circle that, this 7 I have to rotate my number and align that with the dimension line, the 7 is here taken care of maybe this number is too close to the front view, but let us not worry about that. 20, done, this side 30, done, 25, 13, 19, 13, perhaps I am not very good at lettering, I need to go back and practice, but for now. So, this is 22. So, this dimension is taken care of, this height is 50, appears over here. This done, 35 and 7. So, maybe I will start with 7 and then I will go 35, 35 and finally, R 6. which is here and I have to point an arrow towards the center of the sock. Let me take away my sketch, let me take away the object, place the drafter here, 
or maybe take it out of sight. And this is how the final third angle orthographic view of this object would look like. I hope that I have not missed any line hidden or solid construction hinges 